Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. It sure is good to see everyone today at Christian Fellowship. We want to just make you feel welcome. We want to welcome everybody joining us from home online. We are excited about today and throughout the entirety of this holy week as we move into Easter next Sunday. And with this week, we just want to start with just a couple of announcements. Um, our fast is going to be slightly different uh, in the month of April. Uh, as you guys know, we declared in January that this is the year of restoration. We believe prophetically through the Holy Spirit. We've been fasting for three days, uh, usually between Monday and Wednesday. This week, I felt led by the Lord to kind of alter that. We are going to fast this Thursday through Sunday. Anybody that wants to join us for our Easter services, we want to encourage you to invite your family and friends to service next week. They'll have two opportunities for church next week. We are going, and I'm so excited about this, we are going to get to have our sunrise service next Sunday morning at 615 Woo! That is uh, my favorite time, my favorite service of the year. Absolutely love it. Um, I know it's a little early, and God has blessed us with good weather every year. We're going to believe that again. Uh, we come out, and we have um, communion and worship and just a brief devotion, and we watch the sunrise, and we worship Jesus, and there's nothing like it. So everybody say with me, next week, next week, 615 at the dam. All right, on the walking path. It's, it's an awesome service. We encourage you, if you've not been a part of it, go ahead and come out. You're going to want to bring a chair uh, if you want to sit, because obviously there's no seating out there. So if you want to bring a chair with you, that'd be great. Um, we'll see you next week. Also, our 10 o'clock service will be right here next week. We're going to be adding some seats in the sanctuary as well. Uh, bring your family and friends with you. We're looking forward to just worshiping. I feel now that spring is here, new beginnings, and we're pressing forward together. So back to the fast. That'll be beginning on, when, on Thursday morning, and we're going to fast through Sunday. And people ask me, what should I fast? 
And my answer is always the same, whatever God tells you to. How many people believe that obeying what the Lord tells you to do is always the right path? I always fast food, or at least I have thus far. I I believe that's what the Lord's leading me to do again. And just pray and press in, declaring that this is the year of restoration. And any area you need to see God move in your life, that's what we're praying for. Uh, Our offerings, there's several ways to give here at our church. It's still been a little different. There's boxes out front. I always feel like a flight attendant when I do this. There's boxes out front. They're on the side, you know, as well. And you can uh, use that. You can also text to give or give online at christianfellowship.org. Uh, let's all stand to our feet and just welcome the president. Wait, actually, sit back down. Simon didn't say stand up. See, everybody lost. Everybody in the room lost. Uh, and it's just crazy. We're actually, <laughs> we're actually going to start with a baby dedication this morning. I know. Oh, come on up, guys. And it's Mr. Rowley's grandkids. Rachel and Jonathan are with us this morning. It's just such an honor to have these guys. This morning we're going to dedicate Michael Asher and Silas Edward to the Lord. We believe that this is a significant thing that we do um, in this church. Just like Hannah brought Samuel back to the house of the Lord. (laughs) God uh, God gave Samuel to Hannah and Hannah brought Samuel back to the house of the Lord and said, He's yours, Lord. And this is symbolic of that. We want to lay hands on these boys and just believe that God is going to do the supernatural in their lives. And we also devote ourselves to being the support base and the church family that we need to be. Can you give them one more round of applause as they come up? Jonathan and Rachel, God is expanding your tribe Like arrows in the hands of a mighty warrior, so are the children of a man's youth. And let's say this, their quiver is getting full. (laughs) Might be time to get a bigger quiver. No, all jokes aside, God is so faithful. So good to see you guys. We love this family. They've been a part of this church from its inception and just has been such a wonderful blessing to this church over the last 50 years. Hey, bud, how you doing? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Would you stand up now and stretch your hands out as we pray? Jen, why don't you come up here with me, babe? Psalms chapter 127, verse 1, and I always read this passage. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain that you rise up early and go to late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward like arrows in the hand of a warrior. So are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame, and when he speaks with his enemies at the gate. One word stuck out to me this morning, warrior. How many people believe in today's culture we need a new generation of history changers and warriors for the kingdom of God? You know, I just really believe with everything inside of me that God has given you these two as warriors for not only your family, but for the kingdom of God. Can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Michael and Silas, Lord, the gifts of the Lord. And right now, Father, we pray as we lay our hands on this family, Lord, that the anointing of the Lord would come on these children. 
Father, like warriors in their hands, Father, may they go forth with the word of God in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. May they be warriors for the kingdom of God, true ambassadors for the name of Jesus. We pray for wisdom for Rachel and Jonathan, Father, that, that you would give them everything they need to raise these boys in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Father, we thank you for the blessings of God and may the blessings of God fall upon this home as you has gifted this family with these children lord we devote them back to you and we say use them for your glory lord and use them for your namesake may jesus's name receive glory through their lives and through the words of their mouth father and the meditations of their heart we bless them we call these children blessed in the name of jesus christ we pray Amen. Hallelujah. Stay standing. Let's worship Jesus this morning. Love you. Search the world, but he could even fill me. A man empty prayers and treasure of the faith. Never to know that you can alone uh, and put me back together. And every design is now satisfied here in your love. My failures and flaws, for you seem the more, and you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountains is the God of the valleys, and there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Better 
Nothing's Jesus. Nothing is better than you. Come on and say it again to the King of Kings this morning. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Lord, there's nothing. Come on, you want to turn your morning. He want to change your morning. Come on and say with me, you turn morning to dancing. You turn morning to dancing. Come on. You give beauty for ashes. Yes, he does. You turn shame into glory. You're the who can and that's why we are here this morning there is nothing, nothing, nothing better than you and worshiping you Lord
The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God, who called me here below, will be forever. too far on my own I wasn't created to bear it alone I hear your invitation to let it all go I see I'm laying it down and I know that I need you. I run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to
Jesus for your faithfulness. Great, great is the faithfulness. Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow. assured of is that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a faithful God, and He's a good, good Father. Hallelujah. 
Kiddos, why don't you come on up? We want to pray over you, and we want to send you next door. Hallelujah. here strong today the last few weeks he's been dealing with me in different ways you can be seated the the group up here was singing and I looked back and there was a heavenly choir that joined them and I could just see them there the next week I was looking up and no everybody was just sitting still and I looked around and all of a sudden there was heavenly beings dancing across praising the Lord you know, he just keeps impressing on me. Two weeks ago, there was a locomotive that started back here in the back. It started off small. And as it come forth, it got bigger and bigger. As it bursted through here, it was like God's power was getting ready to break loose. Hallelujah. He told me last week that this right here is our future generation. That we got people sitting back here that's got pain in their body, wanting to be delivered from different things. And he said, have the children to pray for them. So I want to also, any that wants to, under 20 years old, that wants to join them, because I'm going to ask the people to come up and let the children pray for them. Amen. So if there's anybody here that wants to join them, Come ahead. But I believe the anointing is here today. And the Holy Spirit is just wanting to heal, deliver, and just bring forth his glory. Amen. So if anybody's here that has pain in their body or wants deliverance, just step up and ask one of these children to just pray for you. That's a great you don't have to be pacific. Just let them know that you are there and let them see God work through Amen. It. Amen. Thank you, Brother Richard. Let's let's obey that. If anybody has anything in their life they need prayer for at all, like uh, Jeremiah said, the Lord said to Jeremiah, don't let anybody look down upon you because of your youth. I appreciate Brother Richard o obeying the Lord. Kiddos, <laughs> you heard what Mr. Richard said. These people are coming up because we serve the same God and you carry the same Holy Spirit. Wow, this is beautiful. Guys, let's bow our heads and close our eyes and let's let these kiddos pray and let's all pray together. Father, we thank you for that word from the Lord this morning. We thank you for what you're doing amongst our kids, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing in the next generation. You're seeming to build a theme here today, Lord, and it's beautiful. We've dedicated a new generation of warriors to you, Lord, and now... This generation, Father, carries the same Holy Spirit, and we pray right now that the Holy Spirit would be manifested at this altar right now in Jesus' name, that as they lay hands on the sick, that they'll recover, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for the gifts of the Holy Spirit that have manifested here. We thank you for that exhortation. And right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that you will just bless that word. In Jesus' name. Father, you're the same. You're the same Holy Spirit. And we pray right now, Lord, that you'll just absolutely manifest at this altar right now. And as we send our kids next door, stretch your hands out and let's pray for them now. Father, in the name of Jesus, as they go next door, Father, may the Holy Spirit be with them. Father, we know that you are. You reside on the inside of them. Father, may they encounter you. Open their eyes to see you, Father, and anoint our kids' church today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, have fun. Thank you for obeying the Lord, and thank you for obeying the Lord in that word, Brother Richard.
that one more time. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him. Thank you, worship team. You guys can be dismissed this morning as well. Aren't you thankful for this time of year? Man, it's beautiful outside. Finally, I've been pushing the shorts a little bit early. And I apologize for those of you that have seen me in shorts. One of my favorite things to do, especially this year, my wife kind of makes fun of me because I like my chair. Men, how many people... How many men out there have a spot? It's a chair. It has a U-sized groove in it. You like to sit there. No one else. There's no vacancy. That's your spot. I have that spot. I, and if I was being quite honest, I have my blankie that goes with my spot. <laughs> I like to sit in my chair with my blanket, and I like to look out my backyard. There's tons of wildlife out there. There's deer, there's squirrels, and everything else. I remember not too long ago, the winter we had when there was zero degrees weather outside, and we had a couple of snowstorms uh, in the same week. Seems like an eternity ago, doesn't it? I remember looking at a grove of dogwood trees that we have in our backyard, and uh, just watching the snow sit on their branches and kind of pile up at their bases, hoping that it wouldn't affect the next month and a half. And the snow melted and the dogwoods stood. Then the last couple of weeks, we're moving into that season of severe weather. I remember watching the same dogwood trees not face the cold now, but they're now facing The storm and the winds and the rains and there's mud all around them wondering if the roots are deep enough to be sustained. Wondering will they be able to make it until this time. That was just a couple of weeks ago and even some this week. More recently though I looked out this week at those same dogwood trees and there's something new on them. And it's beautiful. It's buds turning into blooms. I love our dogwood trees. And I especially love them this time of year. Sometimes we have to wait through some intense seasons to get to this point. And there's a verse that the Lord spoke to me this week. And... I guess this sermon is brought to you by the dogwood tree. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, one verse I want to talk about this morning. And oh, how true it is in life. He has made everything beautiful in its time. I said he has made everything beautiful in its time. I don't know what season you're in right now. You may be facing the cold winter of life, wondering if you're going to make it through. You may be having the daylights beat out of you by the winds and the rains and the storms. But I tell you, the same promise that was spoken to Solomon is the same promise to us that God makes everything beautiful In its time. Paul later reiterates that with something very similar. He said, all things work together for the good of those that serve the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And how great that is. We've seen some things in our lives, but I can tell you I'm 
about to be 44 years old. The secret's out. I'm 44 years old in a couple of months. But I can echo the word. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And I've never seen the seed begging for bread. Because all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. And the same God of the Old Testament is the same that I echoed a few moments ago. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still in the business of making things beautiful. And it's time. Jenny and I have walked through some things this past year, as you have. We've walked through some things in our marriage. I shared our story not too long ago, and if you'd give me a little liberty this morning, I'd like to share it again. We are coming up on our 20th anniversary. Man, how time flies. I am surprised that I'm still alive because I made a lot of mistakes. And she knows how to handle a rolling pin. <laughs> Big time. Early on in our marriage, uh, she uh, got pregnant and we lost that baby. She uh, told me she was pregnant and I made the mistake that no man ever need to make. When she told me, I said, oh, no. Don't judge me. Go ahead and judge me. Just don't stone me. It took me about one second to get happy. But we lost that child. And if no one's ever walked through that, they have no clue. How many people have walked through that journey yourself? Man, it's tough, isn't it? There's no words to express but from that moment on, uh, things changed in my heart. And then we had a very active boy about a year and a half later. He looks like one of the sons of Anak. He is just absolutely a giant in his own right. And we decided that we wanted to add to our family. But we got struck with something even more difficult than what we had walked through before Trey was born. And it was the battle of infertility. We tried month in and month out to have a child. And we were in the winter season where the snow was on our limbs and in our branches, wondering if we were going to make it through, knowing that God was who he said he was. And then I did what I always do. I try to analyze everything. And I tried to buckle down and wrap my mind around it. So, after about five years of no success, I said, I'm going to do this. So I tried to do it my way. That doesn't work too well. We spent thousands of dollars on procedures that we might as well have just thrown in the trash can. And then, I kind of, it's kind of the stages of grief. I, uh, I entered the bargaining stage, and I don't know why I did this. How many people have ever tried to bargain with God? Here was my promise, and I don't know why. I guess because it would cost me something more than money. I said, God, if you will give me this, I will let go of my pride and run around the church in a church service. He never did. And then I entered the anger stage. Watching my wife hurt. And not being able to do one stinking thing about it. Husbands, we're fix-it people, aren't we? Held my wife as she cried herself to sleep every night with one heart cry. And I was broken inside. And then slowly, God began to move us into the season of acceptance. The storms were beating down at the base of our dogwood, but something beautiful was about to bloom. 
And it came at first in the form of a little Korean girl that moved in our house. They put out a call. I had just become the pastor of this church. And uh, she's watching online this morning. Hey, Katie. Um, she came to our house and we were, yeah, we were broken. And I remember when she called me dad, the shock waves that sent into my heart. And she lived with us a year and we let her fill a void in us and God provided a relationship with her and we still have it to this day and we have a son-in-law named Arvin and God's brought him in our family. Little did she know that God used her to begin a healing process in my life. But God wasn't finished yet. Because though there were buds that hadn't started blooming yet. God gave me another relationship. And it was with you, Faith. She had just lost her father. And I was in a place. I saw that young girl. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And I think I've told you this before. I'm sure I have. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you tell her that you will never go without the voice of a father in your life. And God put her in my life. And she's been a daughter to me now for 10 years or so, I guess. I don't, my time frames are off. I'm getting, I told you I was about to be 44. The mind's starting to slip. We went to a lot of, a lot of things together and he just gave me such a beautiful relationship with her. And I got to the place that I embraced God's plan more than my plan. Guys, let me tell you something. Life will throw you curveballs. And I wouldn't, honestly, those first 10 years of bargaining and anger and doing it my way and acceptance and frustration as a husband not being able to fix my wife's pain faith when God brought you in my life I wouldn't change one moment of it not one I'm so grateful for God's plan and then all of a sudden, the dams broke, and kids started flooding in our house, and we became a second mom and a dad. I don't even want to start mentioning names, because our lives really got interesting. We would go to bed at night, and there would be somebody sleeping on our couch the next morning that wasn't there when we went to bed. Everybody knows our garage code. Or I would come home and there's kids in our house. I remember one time we went on vacation and 17 of them stayed in our house one night and had a party. I'm like, I don't care. And God brought us this army of people that we love so much. And there are kids. And the flower began to bloom. And I began to realize, Lord, you make everything beautiful in your time. We live through winter, and we live through the storms, but <laughs> you weren't done yet, and all I had to do was hold on, and it wasn't long after God brought this army of kids, now that's not kids anymore, in our lives, they're starting to get married, some having kids of their own, that God even removed the desire that I had all those years earlier because he fulfilled it in a, such a beautiful way. We not only became okay, we thrived and we were excited about life because God makes everything beautiful and it's time. And we just kept doing what we're doing. And then 2020 strikes. I've tried my best this past year to stay focused on Jesus and his goodness. 
I've been about as open and transparent with our struggles as I know how to be. I don't want to put the focus on them, but I've, you're my family, and I want to walk through these things with you because when March of last year hit, it's like another winter season came on our dogwoods. I'm telling you, when COVID hit, trying to just love people and point to Jesus in the midst of such confusion and conflict has been such a difficult task. And I've said this before, and I mean it. If we've offended you in any way, I ask for your forgiveness because that's not been our hearts. Everybody has had a different opinion. I've been yelled at because of this. And then I got a phone call and got yelled at because of this. It's been a challenging year. And everybody is on edge and angry about something. Most of us don't even know what we're angry about. And then just trying to hold our church together to meet in person. Guys, I, I've not one time wanted to control what one person did at any given time. That's between you and the Lord. I just want us to be able to fellowship around the throne of Jesus Christ. It's all that I've tried to do. What's your agenda? My agenda has been Him. And if it's gotten lost in translation, I'm sorry. And then the following month, the rug was yanked out from underneath me when my dad had his stroke and subsequently went on to be with the Lord. Right in the midst of an already trying season, I just wanted to die. And I prayed, Lord, take me. I don't want to live anymore. This is so hard, God. trying to continue to preach and carry the load of ministry when your world has fallen apart and you've lost your champion and your best friend. There's no words. I've tried to be honest about it without taking the focus off of Jesus and putting it on my struggle. I don't want that, but we walk through a winter season. And then the fall of that season is maybe we're starting to pick the pieces up. We get a phone call and a visit from my wife's parents and find out that my mother-in-law has stage 4 cancer. And we heard things that no one ever wants to hear. Time limits and things like that has spread to multiple organs. God's moving in her life, though. She's still not with us. She's still in the middle of chemotherapy. And we trust the Lord more than we do that. But it's been a year. And then, I'm not even going to touch the nasty political season we just walked through. I mean, people left this church because of things that I did not say that they thought I should have had. And all my heart has been is to just preach Jesus and him crucified like Paul told us to. I'm not saying nothing else is important. You say... <laughs> and then, I mean, I have been blistered over that issue and I genuinely care I really do but my world was falling apart and all I was trying to do is focus on Jesus and that's it because that is the common denominator that is the power that changes the world and he's the one that I've learned throughout the entirety of my life is the one that makes all things beautiful in its time if we could only look to him and I wished I could say the winter was over, but it wasn't. It was only just beginning. 
because then it turned to my wife and we've not been as open about this. They found some masses in my wife's abdomen and because the place that her mother was in, female issues and stuff like that, they began to do a battery of tests on my wife. And I'm telling you, as a husband, I was afraid. I know we're not given a spirit of fear, but I was afraid. They did a cancer panel on her, and every day I couldn't shake it out of my mind. A battery of tests. And they found two lemon-sized growths that they said, we're going to have to watch these. Every three months, you're going to have to come back and we're going to see if they've grown more. And there might have to be some mitigation we do. We're okay right now. So we kind of made it through that. And then January hit our church. And I don't know if people have realized this or not. We have had eight deaths in this church since January. In the last two months. Key members and great friends. And great faithful members of this church. And I'm looking out at over some of the families that you've lost so much. The last of those deaths was my mom's father, my grandfather. That don't even sound right. Papa. He's the one that sat right where Jason did with his hands lifted constantly. If you heard the hallelujahs or praying in tongues, it was my old Pentecostal Papa. There are no words to express the force, and not physical presence alone, but the spiritual presence that he was in our family. He's been my hero my whole life. And once again, I'm thinking, how long is this winter going to last? <laughs> I'm ready for spring, God. This year has been from hell. And then I noticed in my wife, she's starting to hurt. And I looked at her this week and I said, we need to call the doctor. I said, you're about to walk through something and you're about to walk through surgery, Jenny. You just need to get ready. She's hurting and feeling the pressure. So we called the doctor. And we went in for this, another ultrasound to hear the news that these things have grown more and they're going to have to do this now. And I'm sitting there just shaking, wondering what's coming, knowing God makes everything beautiful in its time. And she hooks her up to this machine and she says, yeah, I see it. And then I heard something. Boom, 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 boom. And this lady says, oh, my. Oh, there's more. <laughs> she says, ma'am, you're pregnant. And then she started to take measurements and she said, you're not just a little pregnant. You're 18 weeks pregnant. And my fear level grew exponentially. <laughs> Words cannot describe what this week has been. 
Because I was okay. I was okay and thriving and happy with God's plan. But God once again has made something beautiful in his time. I don't know if you realize this or not. My wife's about to turn 43 years old. In just a couple of in just a couple of months, my son will be 17. <laughs> Have you seen my wife's two-seat Mini Cooper? <laughs> By the way, if you're interested in buying a two-seat convertible <laughs> Mini Cooper, we we've got one for sale. We were starting to enjoy, not that we want my son to move out by any means, <laughs> but the light in the tunnel of empty nest was growing bright. And now it's as dark as the inside of a coffin on a moonless night. And I'm afraid that night's going to be sleepless. <laughs> I will be 63 years old when this kid graduates Christian Fellowship High School. <laughs> we had buried some things and accepted God's plan. And let me tell you, it truly was His plan. And I'm eternally grateful for it. It's just another added level of beauty in its time. And I would not have traded a moment of hardship for these past few years. Army of kids that have been in our home, you're about to be an army of babysitters. <laughs> I'm telling you, I said all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. And they're called according to His purpose. Because we serve a God that makes everything beautiful and it's time. Like I announced earlier, when the year turned, uh, David was always so good at this, and God spoke to him in this way. I, I remember when he was pastor, the Lord would give him a theme for the year. This is the year of grace. This is the year of more grace. Or this is the year of something else. This year, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, This is the year of restoration. Behold, I will restore what the swarming locust has eaten. All things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. So, on August the 26th, we're going to welcome Liam Zacharias Clendenin. It's a boy. <laughs> there was no mistake in it. <laughs> My God, help us. <laughs> yes, it is. My shock has quickly been overwhelmed with joy. You know, last year, after my dad died, I've shared this many times in this church, that my genuine prayer was glorify the name of my king. Lord, I submit to you, you're the Lord, and I'm not. And you've said you know the desires of our heart, but hear my prayer, glorify the name of my king in life or in death. 
And I want to tell you, as we've exchanged a valley for a mountaintop, my prayer has not changed. Glorify the name of my king in this. Glorify the name of my king and make the name of Jesus great. This is for his glory, for his honor, and for his fame. And we want to make his name great through it. I've shared this with you for two reasons. One, you're our family, and we want to celebrate with you. Because me and Jen's victory is your victory. And our victory is his victory. And to him belongs all the glory. I think about the times that this church walked through this with us. I called him this week. I remember Gary Lamb bringing me and Jenny about 10 years ago. How many people remember that service? You will once I tell you this. He brings us up here. And man, God has used that man so much in this life, in this church, and uh, in my life too. Brings us up here. And he brings up Dave and Jamie and Jimmy and Debbie. And here's what he said. I thought it was hilarious. He said, these two want a baby, and you two couples are the most fertile people I know. (laughs) You guys remember that? And he said, I want you all to lay hands on them, and church, we're going to pray. You didn't miss it, brother. You didn't miss it. I remember Phil Lunsell doing the same thing on a Sunday night. He's now gone on to be with the Lord this past year. I remember Jan Cowan coming to me every week saying, I'm still praying. Jimmy, your mom has prayed for that for us for so many years, and I hope you're listening, Miss Pat, because he's faithful. Guys, this is out of the ordinary for me, but... I need to fulfill my part of the bargain. Let me tell you something, I've lost 33 pounds since January 1st. I wouldn't have been able to do that. God makes everything beautiful in its time. (laughs) Second reason I wanted to share this, and I hope, Lord, This has been for you today. (laughs) I've shared our story because I am bold enough to believe that there's others in the midst of a similar season, not necessarily with that issue. But as you survey your life, (laughs) all you see, and I'm still out of breath, (laughs) all you see is snow on the branches or you see limbs being knocked off or you see mud accumulating because of the rain or you see the cold weather killing the blooms and the buds but I'm telling you joy comes in the morning he's a God that makes everything beautiful in its time I don't know where you're at right now But he makes everything beautiful in its time. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You may be in the winter, but I'm telling you, hold on. Sorrow may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And he's the God that makes it beautiful, church. He's the God that makes it beautiful. We started this year as a prophetic declaration of the year of restoration. And the Lord spoke to me that I'm going to restore what the swarming locust has eaten. 
We're going to continue to fast because the year of restoration is only beginning. Guys, there's more coming. God's not finished yet. Don't lose heart and don't quit because joy's coming. Jenny, I want you to join me up here. I love you. And I have asked my spiritual father and mentor, David Parrish, to come this morning and to pray and to lead our church over a prayer. And I want him to pray over him as well. Because this is the second dedication this morning. This is the Lord's and we devote it to him. But you're our family, and we're going to walk through this together. David, won't you come? And I also have asked him, yeah, to pray. Is that on? I've also asked him to pray over our church that this be the beginning of many more. Matter of fact, if you want to get out of your seat and come, you know, if you don't feel comfortable, that's fine, but you're welcome to join us up front. Go ahead, Brother David. Before I pray, I just want to say to Jimmy and Debbie, and Dave and Jamie, you are never to lay hands on me and Patty, ever, <laughs> ever. I love you, but no. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, come on up, everybody that wants to do that. There's, yes, get the rest of this family. Debbie. Renee and Landon, look at this. <laughs> Put a shield about me, Lord, right now. Never say never. That's right. <laughs> Miracles still happen. <laughs> Praise God. Yes, Lord. Folks, I want to tell you this is a historic yes, moment. Yes, it is. Uh, the church started 50, in September 52 years ago. And there has never been the birth of a baby in the family of a senior pastor in 52 years. Uh, I was eight years old when dad and mom were here, came here. Lindsay was six when Pat and I became the pastors. And, and I think Trey was six or seven years old when they became the pastor. So this is a first. And I think this is a historic thing. And I think it's even a, 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 a sign of blessing on the church. Because what God does in the life of that, which is the, the head of the local church in, the, in that governmental sense, uh, is a, can be a symbol of what God wants to do for the whole and for every person. And I rejoice with them right now. And you guys, I love you so much. And I just am looking forward to meeting Liam Zacharias. And church, we want to pray for every aspect of this. This pregnancy, Jenny's health, the health of this baby.
thank you for the faith in, in, in Sister Peter. Debbie's mom. family, Lord, that the, that the anointing will just grow greater every generation, as already on Trey as well, in the name of Jesus. But Lord, we pray, Lord, for this new one, Lord, that all will go well, in the name of Jesus, that there'll be no worries. Lord, I pray for no worries, for peace, Lord, peace of mind, Lord, for Richie, in the name of Jesus. The perfect peace of God to guard his heart and mind right now in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, you will strengthen both of them, Lord. And that, Lord, both of them will feel like they're in their 20s again in the name of Jesus. Give, give them the health and the strength of, of, a 20, of 25-year-old people, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Renew their youth like the eagles, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray right now, we plead the blood of Jesus over them, over, over Jenny and Richie and Trey and Liam, their immediate family, Lord. We ask for a hedge of protection upon them for health and strength, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now, Lord... This man is, has been set in by you as the under-shepherd of this church. And as so, Lord, Father God, it is the church's duty, Lord, to cover them with prayer. And I know that's already being done. But Lord, right now, a greater assignment, a new assignment has come, Lord, on the church. And how many of you will say, I will step up to the plate and I'm going to pray for this family more than I have been. R lift your hand right now as a, as a promise to the Lord right now. And I want you to do this every day. I don't want there to be a day over the between now and whenever this child appears in this world. And then you'll be in a good habit just to keep it up. But until the birth of this child, I want you to pray for this family in an extraordinary way every day. Now, don't forget it. Write it down. Set an alarm clock. I don't care what you have to do. This becomes number one on your prayer list right now. Amen? Hallelujah. Stretch your hands and begin to pray in the Spirit over them right now. In the name of Jesus right now, Lord, as a church, we surround them with your blessing right now. We surround them with your blessing, Lord, right now. We thank you, Lord, for this new life. We thank you, Lord, that you've given this gift. We thank you that spring is here, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that spring is here. 
Thank you, Lord, that we're in a new season now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just cover them with, your, with, your, with prayer right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, my Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, you bring life from death, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Lift your hands and praise him right now for this. Now, church, how many of you would say, I want the restoration in my life, that there's a new birth, a new thing in your life that you want God to spring forth also? Lift your hand if you say, that's me. I want to receive that. Hallelujah. How many of you believe this could be a great sign of a season of God's outpouring and miracles upon our lives this year? Grace and favor right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' Hallelujah. name for every person right now in this place and that's watching online. We ask, Lord, for a season of healing. We ask for a release of restoration right now. What the enemy has eaten up out of people's lives is restored by God in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Father, release your angels of restoration. Release your angels of provision. Release your angels of comfort. Release your angels, Lord. Release an outpouring of the Holy Spirit into the lives of your people. Lord, there are others maybe that are going through this very same thing. And Lord, I ask you that there will be other people that will get pregnant, Lord, that want babies, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That there are people that want new, uh, that, that are wanting children, Lord, that you'll release that miracle in their lives, Lord, this year. We ask it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And don't you think it's amazing that... Richard Rich didn't have a clue this morning when he said, bring the kids up here and have the children pray. <laughs> How many of you think God's in this place right now? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You have a word? Yeah. I feel I have a scripture. I, I shared during the worship service with Brother Richie this scripture, and he said it. He said I'd see that it feels it's for today, and I believe it is. I'm, Quite sure it is. And during the week in my yearly Bible, I was reading this. And the scripture is from Deuteronomy chapter 8. And I'm just going to read the first, I think it's the first three verses. And I'm going to show you what I felt the Lord told me about this. And let me set this down here so I can. It says, be careful to obey all the commands I am giving you today. Then you will live and multiply. And you will enter and occupy the land sworn to the Lord swore to give to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord, your God, led you through the wilderness for these 40 years, humbling you and testing you, proving your character to find out whether or not you would obey his commands. Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry, and then he fed you with manna of food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people do not live by bread alone, Rather, we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. I felt what the Lord showed me about this. Is if you find yourself in the wilderness, and we all find ourselves in the wilderness, in the desert from time to time, that there's a purpose for that. And the purpose is that you would not trust in the natural, but you would trust in the supernatural promises in the word of God, for they will not fail Amen. you. Amen. So, we all find ourselves in the wilderness. Richie has found himself in the wilderness. But the word of God is to be fulfilled in your life. Amen. You don't trust in the natural. Don't look around the natural and see what's happening, but receive a word from God and trust in that, and it will be fulfilled. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ronnie. Here you go, David. Just put it on that stand there. Guys, one other thing. You might ask, why that name? Zacharias means... The Lord remembers. He never forgets. 
And I don't know where you're at this morning, but I'm telling you, God makes everything beautiful in its time. Father, I want to pray over every person here, Lord, as we continue to press in to this year of restoration. You're the God that remembers, and you're the God that never forgets, Lord, and you're the God that makes everything beautiful in its time. Father, we've only scratched the surface of what you want to do. You spoke at the beginning of this year. I will restore what the swarming locust has eaten. And right now, Father, I pray it over this church. Lord, over every person waiting for the winter season to end and the buds and the blooms to flourish, Father. That season is now, Father. Let your glory fall in this house, Lord, again. Let your glory fall in this place again, Jesus. And manifest your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, we love you guys. Thank you for letting us share our story with you. We're looking forward to what God's going to do in the future. We'll see you Wednesday night right here. Go ahead, brother.